D. Snyder, the front man of Twisted Sister, who's always been outspoken, recently had some choice words for the CEO of Spotify. In an interview, he says, That guy from Spotify? I want to tell you, he should be taken out and shot. When he heard the artists were complaining about how little we get paid, his response was, Make more music. Like we're producing cans of Coke. Just increase the production. It's insulting and belittling. <sighs> That's heavy. Guys, welcome to the Goza Podcast, where we talk about everything rock and roll. If you're wondering about the line across our face, go check out our original music. So this is a big topic. There's a lot of people that have conflicting views on this whole Spotify thing and streaming thing. Tell us, what do you think that the state of the industry as it relates to streaming is today? So as musicians, we're going to come at this from a musician's standpoint, but we want to talk to the fans, okay? So let's unpack this, okay? He says, I want to tell you he should be taking out and shot. Now, first and foremost, we do not condone violence, mm -hmm. all right? Is the CEO of Spotify a piece of shit? Yeah. Is he going to change? Probably not. Right. And so the state of the industry... We're, we're building a new industry. It's like, you know, the phoenix rising from the ashes, but the phoenix mm -hmm. hasn't risen yet because with the, with the beautiful technology of the internet, music has become easily accessible at our fingertips. Right. You know, it used to be that you had a CD collection, a vinyl collection that you took pride in. Yeah. And you had to go to other people's houses to hear, you know, somebody else's collection and oh, that's a great CD. I want to buy it for myself. Right. Now, we have Spotify, Apple Music. We could just listen to any song we want anytime. Mhm. Mm this is beautiful for the fans, right? This is not beautiful for the musicians because we haven't figured out a way to make it a sustainable business. Right. But this guy, Daniel Eck, CEO of Spotify, he's made it work for him. That's right. And, you know, it just reminds me of the music industry as a whole, historically, as it's always been, where business people come in and, and they figure out how they can make money off of these talented people. Right. And this is one of those cases. Exactly. Business guy figured out how he can get some. Yep. On the backs of other talented people. Of true art, of true creativity. And not really giving them a big cut at all. No, not at all. And so it used to be that record labels would upfront all the money. That made it so that the artist could produce the music, focus on the music, mm -hmm. not have to worry about the business side. And in return, the record labels get to take a cut. Yep. Today... Musicians have to be the record label, too. Right. They have to supply the money. They have to figure out a way to come up with the money to record. They have to figure out a way to come up with the money to do a music video and advertise and learn how to market. That's right. Which takes away time from the art. So let's unpack this. He says, his response was make more music, like we're producing cans of Coke. So the, 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 Spotify of C, the uh, CEO of Spotify is so out of touch, right? <laughs> right? That he's like, just give me more product. Right. You want more money? Give me more product. Oh, and he would love that. Exactly. But that's not how it works. No. More music doesn't equal better music. Right. We need time to make great art. And it's just funny because think of all the timeless art. Um they are just as popular as they were the day they were made. This is um once you make one good piece of art, you have 70 years to make money off of it until it goes into public domain. 70 years after your death. After death. There you go. And so for him to say just make more, it's like you could see where he's coming from. He has he he sees absolutely no value in these products that he himself is taking advantage of. And I think he does see value. He obviously does because he's a millionaire, you know, so he's seeing the value, but he, does, he doesn't see the humanity in 
mm. that the artists need their cut. Right. And so the fans, they see the devalue. So all of a sudden there's like right. a status quo of, oh, music's been devalued. 100%. I can pay 10 bucks a month to Spotify and have the world's biggest music collection that there ever was. Right, right. And so it begs the question, okay, why don't you just not put your music up on Spotify? Yeah, so this is a good question. So what about all the artists just boycotting Spotify at the same time? Or at least 20%, 80-20 rule. Right. So the thing with that is, and some artists have, who own their rights. If you own your rights, then you get to do whatever you want with your music. And guys like girls like Taylor Swift have taken their music off of Spotify because she is out of a contract now. Mm. But for all the major rate, all the major label artists, the record label owns the rights to their music, and the record labels get a different payout <gasps> from Spotify. Behind oh the scene gosh. deals. Oh my gosh, that's what's really going on. Right. It's the the it's the labels are in cahoots with Spotify. Exactly. They're getting a bigger cut, and then the artist is getting fractions of a penny. Right. Literally. Right. So the top tier artists that are finally complaining about the model mm-hmm. that the up and comers have always been complaining about, they're finally letting the people know. So it's great that people like D. Schneider are are stepping out so that the normal fan can know what's going on. Right. We can't rely on Spotify. Mm -hmm. We have to take the industry in our own hands by coming up with new ways to fund our art. 100%. And the thing that would change Spotify is if fans got on board and stopped listening on Spotify. Right. I mean, even Apple Music pays out their artists more than Spotify. Right, exactly. So if you are trying to make a difference, don't support Spotify. Go on Apple Music. Mm -hmm. Go on YouTube. YouTube's even better. They pay out less, but the reason that YouTube is better is because their algorithm is better it's supporting the artists it's supporting the videos you get to know the artists that's why we're doing these podcasts you know so that you get to see who we really are right and that's why youtube is a great commodity for musicians right and we don't no one's buying cds anymore no one's buying vinyls so there has to be a complete reshift in the mindset of how we're going to further this music industry. 100%. And it's up to us. Right. These these top tier artists, they're locked into the old game. Right, while the new game is just eating them up. Right, exactly, because they're not prepared for the rules of the new game. There needs to be an entire shift of reality. I mean, if you think about how much value a piece of art, music, provides in the everyday person's life. I mean, what do you play when you get married? A yep. song yep. that touches you deeply. What do you play at a funeral? A song that touches you deeply. A graduation, a party. Yeah, you go into a grocery store, they put on music to create an ambiance for you to continue to shop there, to feel good. Right. And it's just interesting how all throughout time, artists are taken advantage of the most of any any other artists. You know, you're talking about an actor, a painter. Musicians are constantly being told that, oh, well, exposure. At least you're getting exposure. You're not going to get paid. In fact, you're going to have to pay to play here. Yep. You're going to have to pay a subscription. You're going to. Ha- it's constantly the industry <laughs> is. The industry just really, really wants to attack the musician. I don't know what spiritual game this is, but something has to change because music is is so precious in life. And until 
people can change their minds, like you said, um, the quality of music is just going to plunder. Yeah, I mean, we've seen the quality of music plunder. I just have not seen, you know, many artists that are coming out today with the same kind of weight mm -hmm. that they have in the past. Yeah, let's talk about the whole Spotify game that you were kind of researching a few years back of how to get more plays on Spotify. Tell them about how um, these sort of techniques that all these different musicians are doing to get more plays. Yeah, so it's all algorithm-based, right? Mm -hmm. So even when you had the, the disc jockeys at the radios back in the day, that was a curated human, mm -hmm. you know, and we respected them for their taste. Mm -hmm. Now we have algorithms, and the algorithm can be gamed, and it can be cheated, and there can be bots, you know, bots that play the song a million times. And there's thresholds that won't trigger Spotify to say, okay, we're taking that down. Those are fake plays. So mm -hmm. now people know the threshold. Yep. And then once it hits a certain number, the algorithm says, oh, people love this song, and they start putting it out more. Mm -hmm. And if that song is the song that's number one on Spotify, people want to try to make a song that sounds like that, that has... You know, okay, people are skipping within the first 10 seconds, so I got to start singing within the first 10 seconds or else people are going to skip the song. Right. How many great songs in history have long intros? Long intros, random intros. Right, and so all that, yeah. there's no room in Spotify for that. No room for artistic taste. Artistic development. There's mm -hmm. no room to get entranced into the song. And so there are courses out there that musicians are eating up because they're so desperate in this system uh, that are teaching musicians to how to write music like these other, you know, in these other genres, how to sound just like them so that you can get on those same playlists, so you can get those plays, so you can get those fractions of pennies. I mean, it's, it's such a desperate world you know, it's such a desperate little corner that the world has pushed musicians into. And so all you have all these playlists of so many different musicians that sound exactly the same. Right. And it's not equaling great art. It's not. It's not original. Sure, it might all, you know, be good for that one little mood, or that little road trip that you're on and you want to, you know, listen to music that sounds like this artist. But you're, you're not going to get those great legendary pieces of art. No one's going to be playing that song at their wedding. 50 years from now. No. Yeah, exactly. And, I mean, that's why we set out with Goza. Okay, we're just going to do music that we want to do. Mm -hmm. And so I'll have an intro, a long intro with a guitar solo, you know? And from, like, a, an industry representative's perspective, they're like, okay, we got to cut that solo out. Like, why are you playing a solo right in the beginning? You need to hook them with lyrics, 100%. with a great lyric, you know? Yeah, go tell that to Stevie Ray Vaughan. <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? Right. The music that I love has always been people's untethered creativity. Right. And, you know, that brings us to, I feel like we're in a beautiful place because Spotify is, is so terrible at paying out that it's like, what's the point? Why do I want your stupid plays? To get fractions of a penny. Mm -hmm. Let me just make the art that I want to make. I don't exactly. care about getting getting on these playlists and you know getting part of the algorithm. It's like no. It's not worth it. No. And you have people like Snoop Dogg. Snoop Dogg, yeah, he recently came out and said that with over 1 billion plays. A billion. This guy is huge. Legend. They paid him out $45,000. 45,000. That's a you know, minimum wage, full-time job. That's what he pays the person to roll his blunts. <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure I heard $40,000 a year, Snoop Dogg pays the person to roll his blunts. So Snoop Dogg might be cutting down his costs <laughs> and might have to roll his own blunts, you know? And, you know, it's okay. People are saying, oh, well then, you know, musicians don't deserve this much money. It's, it's not even that much money. You know, those kind of people, I really don't care about their opinion 
because those are the same kinds of people who, um, you know, who don't want to help the homeless, who don't, they have no compassion in their heart. They have no value for life. They, there's something wrong with their brain. Mankind, for them to say that musicians don't deserve that money. Okay, really? Mankind has survived and evolved by helping each other, mm -hmm. by building communities, by building teams and families. Mm -hmm. And it's not until recently with the industrial age and now going into the digital age, and it's actually the digital age that's going to bring us back to communities and taking things into our own hands. Mm -hmm. But when we rely on others... They get to tell us how we should think. Mm -hmm. They get to tell us how we should act. Right. You should go to school, work hard, and get a low-paying job and have a bunch of debt on your back. We didn't grow up in a time when it was like, hey, you're an entrepreneur. No matter what you think or say, you're selling yourself, whether you're selling yourself in an interview or whether you're selling yourself online in a podcast. Things are shifting for the better. But it's going to kind of hurt during this growth, this growth spurt, you know? Right, right. Yeah. Should we wrap it kind of? Yeah. So, guys, our message is to you. If you support artists, if you support music, buy merch. Go see their shows. Go look for up-and-coming musicians. Support them in any way that they're asking you to. But don't think that Spotify is going to be the answer. Yeah, we can't depend on Spotify to change. It's just a business guy at the end of the day who wants more money. Right. And he is good at taking advantage of people. Exploiting. He is good at exploiting. So a new model is on its way, that's for sure. Yes. And for now, we're going to be just focusing on what we want to focus on, creating yes. the art that we want to create because the models today, right now, are not, it's not worth the whole game. Right. And something as simple as a subscribe and a like goes a long way because it's going Tremendous. to help push us out. 100%. If you do like what we do and if you like our music, we have merch available. And if you don't buy our merch, go buy another musician's merch. 100%. Support them. Wear that t-shirt. And together, the fans and the musicians are going to be the answer. As always. <laughs>